Welcome back to day number 18. We are down to the last few sessions in this 20 days of Chronos configuration series. I hope you've had a good learning sessions so far and looking forward for the last few sessions in this series of uh, Chronos configuration. Today, day number 18, we are going to learn about another building block from the pay rules building block. So let's go right into the pay policies expand pay policies and here we are uh, last time we've seen fixed rules and a bit of processing order as well as punch interpretation rule so this is something that we've covered under the payroll building block so now we are down to the last building block under the site under the payroll building blocks so we're going to go to sign of restrictions and after that, we're going to consider another one more building block and then we go straight into the payrolls. So that will be on day number 20. So if you haven't had a chance to go through the other segments of the payroll section, I'll put the playlist link in the description so that you can go through the other videos that we've covered, which covers all the other building blocks. And um, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please do subscribe so that you get notified for the upcoming videos. That being said, let's go right into the sign of restrictions, which is one of the building blocks, which is under your payroll building blocks. So here we go. Uh, this one is pretty simple and uh, there is not much information in it other than the three things that we will talk about. So sign of restrictions. As you can see, the term itself says restrictions. That means while performing one of the activity, which is signing of the time card, which is a monthly activity, you can say, depending on what's your pay cycle. So if your pay cycle is monthly, then once in a month, you will have to sign off your time card. If it is fortnightly or biweekly or semi-monthly, um, based on your pay period, you will have to sign off the time card as a payroll administrator or HR administrator or a time administrator so that your time and attendance data like your overtime, shift differentials, uh, double time and so on and so forth that can be sent to the payroll system so that while processing the payroll they can include the time and attendance data as well. However, while doing that process of signing of the time card for all your employees, we could create certain restrictions so that when you sign off the time card for let's say 1500 employees or let's say 1000 employees there could be few employees who might have some some things in the time card which needs attention so that point in time those let's say few employees will not be signed off and you will get an error while signing them off so what are those um, things that we can set up which will create the restrictions. And these are the three things. The first one is unexcused absence. The second one is missed lunches. And the third one is zero hours in the pay code, in any of the pay code that we have set up or you have set up for your uh, employees. So these are the three criteria, so to speak, that will restrict a user from signing off the employee's time card and as you know signing of the time card is a is a very frequent event depending on your pay cycle if it is weekly then every week you need to sign on the time card now why why we would need to restrict why there could be a reason let's say for example you want to put a restriction for signing off when there is missed punches well uh, possibly because if employees are paid hourly and if I punched in in the morning but missed to punch out in the in the evening or while log off then for that day I will not get paid but because the system will not calculate any hours for that day and I will lose my money for that particular day but later the employee might reach out to the manager and say that hey I worked on that day just that I forgot but I didn't get paid for that that particular day. So again, you need to do some historical collections and then there will be certain things that needs to be taken care of. So rather 
in doing all those steps and the initial step itself we can create some restriction so if we're using this punch rather than creating um, some uh, discrepancy or maybe uh, creating a problem for the employee with his or her pay we can restrict and avoid such situations um, I will show you one example of these two so that you can quickly know how it works. So first one is missed punches. So let me just create one for missed punches. So I'm creating one. I'm going to name it as missed punches because the only option that I'm going to select now is missed punches. And I'll show you uh, live how it's going to work. I'm going to assign, click on save and assign this to one of the employees payroll that we have, which we've been using. So let's go to the payroll. And in the payroll, this is one of the building blocks that, that you know that we are working on. So under the payroll building block, I have um, this particular payroll. And in this payroll, I'm going to select uh, the sign of restriction, miss punches, update, save okay now we've created that particular building block with missed punches so that means while so let me go to the time part so if an employee has missed punch so let's do this i'll put a punch here and then i'm going to click on calculate or rather let me just click on save so now you can see that this employee has a missed punch missed out punch to be precise now assume that for rest of the day or rest of the pay period, this employee worked 9 to 6, 9 to 6, 9 to 6, Monday to Friday, but only on Monday he had this missed punch. So when I want to, when I try to sign off this, now I'm going to click on sign off and I'm going to click on sign off and you can see this is the error that you will get. The time card cannot be signed off because it contains one of the missed punches. And that is exactly what happens when you try to sign off. So I'll show you once again. So when you click on sign off, this is the violation missing punches. And missing punches is something that we just configured a while ago in our sign off restriction building block. So this is what you will get if you have 1000 employees and let's say 955 employees, they do not have any missed punches, but 45 employees have missed punches. So for them, you will see in the group edit results that they will error out because they have missed punches. The next option that you see under the sign off restriction is the unexcused absence. So what unexcused absence means is you might have noticed that in my earlier sessions, we do not have anything here. So let's see if we have anything in the current pay period. There you go. So what unexcused absence means unexcused absence that means you are scheduled to work for that particular day but you haven't turned in or you haven't come to work so for let's say monday tuesday and um, for the monday and tuesday the employee didn't come to work had the employee come they would have been a punch from nine to five neither the employee has come to work nor the employee has submitted a time of request had there been a time of request, let's say vacation or sick, something, then you would have seen a pay code here. And uh, this red exception wouldn't have been there. Now, again, why there could be a reason you may want to set up this unexcused absence? Again, because it will impact the employee's pay. So employee might be working offsite, maybe employee may be attending a training or employee might have gone for uh, maybe yeah, for a client visit for some reason. So employee is literally working officially, but is not in the office premise to actually punch in or go to the timestamp and enter the timestamp. So employee is literally working officially, but he cannot punch using a clock or a timestamp web application. So that way, if the, the uh, we do not have this sign of restriction, then for this particular two days, the employee or three days rather, uh, employee will not get paid for. However, if there is a sign of restriction for unexcused absence, that means while signing of the time card, the 
uh, administrator or the manager, payroll manager will receive an error so that they can go into the time card and then they can speak to the employee or they can enter the punches so that the employee doesn't miss out on the ping. And later there is no, uh, no need to do any kind of corrections. So these are, these are the, the, this is the second one, unexcused absence. The first one we saw, uh, this is the first one, which is missed punches. So these are the two uh, most commonly used one in case if you're using. And the last one is zero hours in a pay code. What that means is if you work, let's say you work nine to six, as you know, there will be a pay code that will be generated. So for some reason, so there you go. So there is some pay code that has been generated, but for some reason, the, the pay code is zero here. Okay, so the pay code is zero. In that situation, the time card will not be signed off because we are sending zero amount in the payroll and that again will impact the employee's pay. So all these three things will impact the employee pay directly. And that is the reason that you can set this up. Again, it all depends on the client or your customer discretion. If you are a consultant, you are obligated to tell this to your client that these are the options. Would you like to go with it? Also tell them the, the, um, the drawbacks of having this. Uh, for example, you may have 5,000 employees or 10,000 employees and you are right on the day of uh, signing off and uh, tomorrow or today you have to run the, the payroll export file. And imagine out of 10,000 employees, you may get, let's say 230 employees who erred out because of some issues or some mispunches or unexcused absence. Now you as an administrator do not have time to fix those. And then you need to follow with the managers and get them done, or you need to go to their time card and manually do that for 200 plus employees, which is pretty much time consuming. So you can, at times, most of the client, they do not want this to be set up. They would want their, uh, the responsibilities of the time card to be taken care of by the respective managers. So that by the time you reach to this stage where you have to run the payroll export file, uh, you don't come you don't get into these kind of issues where you need to sit and fix them, which is not technically a responsibility of an administrator, but more of a manager responsibility. So you can let the let your client or customer know about this, that this is again something that could happen. Uh, better to make them aware rather than they uh, getting into this situation and then reaching out to you. So signing. Sign of restriction, these are the three things that you can set up. I gave you a demo of how things look like if you have this similar to this one as well. And uh, on the time card or when you go to your, uh, if you want to do a uh, sign off for all employees at one go, similar errors you will encounter at that point in time as well. So that was uh, one of the last building blocks in the sign of restrictions. Uh, day number 18 friends, uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you have any, questions, comments, or clarification, put that down in the comment section. And please do subscribe, and I will see you soon with the final one more building block before we go to the, uh, the payrolls. Till then, take care, stay safe.